Imagine trying to put your child to sleep after a long day of work. Finally, you think he or she is asleep and you go inside to rest a little. But after a few minutes, this is the scene that you see. The baby peeking through the divider curtains in her little bedroom with wide open eyes curious about what's going on outside. Yes, that's me when I was a child. Whenever my parents thought they had put me to sleep, they'd be surprised to see this scene after a few minutes. Why would I want to sleep when there are so many interesting things going on outside, right? As I grew older, things didn't really get any easier. I grew up as a curious child in Turkey where the education system was based mainly on memorization. I would always ask a lot of questions like, why is the sky blue? How does a plane stay in the sky? Why does this formula have to be like this? Sometimes even driving my teachers crazy. But some of my questions would still remain unanswered. I always thought that it would be great to have a different type of educational system where children would get the answers to the questions they're curious about and understand the reasons why rather than having to memorize facts. When I did my undergraduate in Turkey, I wanted to double major in physics and computer engineering. I thought physics would help me understand how the world works better, satisfying my curiosity, and computer engineering would allow me to create something out of nothing and turn my ideas into reality. However, as it turned out, nobody at my university had double majored in physics and computer engineering before. And when I put the schedules of the two majors side by side, there seemed to be no way to finish them both in four years. And I was told that I was not allowed to finish in more than four years because I had a full merit scholarship. <coughs> So my advisors told me to talk to someone who was one of the top administrators at the university during that time. I went to his office, hoping that he would help me find a solution. But, but instead, he looked at me and said, what are you gonna do with your two diplomas? Are you gonna hang them on your kitchen wall? I was shocked. But this actually made me even more determined than ever to find a way to do it. Thankfully, I had amazing professors and mentors at the university, and I had an amazing family who supported me, so I was able to finish my two degrees and four years with honors. When I look back now, this was actually a great experience for me. It taught me the importance of persistence and persevering through challenges, no matter how difficult things seem to be. During my undergraduate years, I also started a club at our university to introduce underprivileged kids to robotics and prepare them for the first Lego Robotics competition that was going to take place for the first time in Turkey that year. This gave me the chance to work with elementary and middle school kids more closely and experience the effects of hands-on learning and teamwork in a real-world setting. I chose to work with a school for kids who had lost one or both of their parents and had limited opportunities because I thought it might be a good experience for them. As we worked together, it was amazing to see the changes that the kids uh, went through. I remember the first time that they came, they were throwing a ball that was in the robotics kit at each other. I didn't know what to do. But as time passed by, they started getting really engaged in working together, and I started loving to work with them. After working hard for months preparing together for the competition, our team came up with a robot design to help disabled people. When the kids passionately explained their project during the competition, the jury was so touched that they began to cry. All the other teams were coming from private schools with a lot of resources, and yet, these kids attracted the most attention with their project and got the top award. We were all so happy. And I was thrilled when the following year, they told me that they wanted to come back and enter the competition again. But this time, I explained to them that in addition to their team, I also wanted to form another team with younger kids from another underprivileged school to give them the same opportunity. At first, my old group got upset, thinking that my attention was going to get split. But I explained to them that these younger kids were going to be like their little siblings and that they could teach them since they were experienced now. So after a while, the older kids started training the younger kids and they were all having fun together. In fact, the day before the competition, the older kids stayed up all night to prepare team costumes for the little kids. In the morning, they all went to the competition together. However, unfortunately, this time something unexpected happened. During the competition, their robot's battery died and they couldn't win anything. They were all crying, thinking that all their hard work was going to be wasted. 
At that moment, I began to explain to them that it's not always about the end result. It's about what you learn and experience along the way. And if you enjoy the experience and take the right lessons, it will eventually take you to where you want to go. And so the following year, when I came to the US to do my master's at Stanford University, my old group contacted me and told me that they had talked to the principal at their school and convinced him to start a robotics club at their elementary school to train younger kids. That year, they entered a global robotics competition in the US and won an award. Currently, some of these kids have become robotics instructors, lawyers, and diplomats with graduate degrees. I am so proud of them. But I'm also so thankful because it was such a great learning experience for all of us. In addition to my incredible learning experience with the kids, I also had another eye-opening experience while I was teaching physics to undergrads during my master's degree. In one class, we were doing an experiment about prisms to demonstrate how colors are formed. While I was going around the classroom, I realized that a girl was copying the results from another notebook right next to her. I approached her and asked what she was doing. She told me that she had taken the class twice before and had failed both, both times, so there was no point in trying to do it again. I, I encouraged her to do the experiment, and I assured her that I was going to be there to guide her along the way. So by herself, she did the whole experiment, and at the end, as she saw the colors forming through the prism, she suddenly yelled, oh my god, so this is how a rainbow forms. I never thought I could do this. So after that day, she was excited to do all the experiments herself and never cheated again. So these experiences made me realize that if you can provide the necessary guidance and support for children to make their own discoveries in an enjoyable way, they can see the colors and the light instead of the dark. I also realized how much impact education can have on their lives, an education that fosters curiosity, collaboration, and persistence. I wanted to offer this experience to many others, and I thought creating new educational technologies could be a great way to do that. When I came to the US, I realized that this problem about education that I had been observing was even bigger and more universal than I had thought. It wasn't only in Turkey that the education system was based on memorization, but there were similar problems all around the world. According to National Center for STEM Elementary Education, one third of children have lost interest in science by fourth grade. That's a huge problem, not only for the US, but the whole world. And even though there are a lot of technologies out there, most of these technologies are also making kids more and more socially isolated from their physical environment. So to solve these problems, during my PhD at Carnegie Mellon University, uh, with my advisors, Ken Katinger and Scott Hudson, we created Norella, a new mixed reality learning platform that bridges the advantages of physical and virtual worlds to improve children's inquiry-based STEM learning fostering their curiosity and 21st century skills like critical thinking and persistence. It uses our patented artificial intelligence method and technology to provide personalized interactive feedback to children as they experiment and make discoveries in their everyday physical environment. While it's fun and engaging, it also promotes collaboration in a world where kids are getting socially isolated. And it turns them into little scientists, helping them find answers to the questions they're curious about. There is curiosity within all of us, but it's not always ignited. Norilla seeks to ignite fires in young people at early ages, and it empowers them to unleash their curiosity, creativity, and natural interest in the world. So think of it this way. Wouldn't it be cool if you had a gorilla friend who was playing with you when you were a kid, giving you personalized feedback as you did experiments with physical objects in the real world? helping you understand the reasons why rather than having to memorize some crazy formulas. So now let's see how this actually works. Good job. The left tower matches. Now place the right tower. Good job. Click to continue. Which tower do you think will fall first when the table shakes? Click on one of the towers on the screen to continue. So which of these towers do you think will fall first when the table shakes? <laughs> Who thinks the red tower or the tower on the left will fall first? Okay. Who thinks the orange tower or the tower on the right will fall first? Okay. Who thinks they'll both fall at the same time? 
Okay, so let's shake and see what happens. Good job. Your hypothesis was correct. Why do you think the left tower fell first? Because it is taller? Because it has a thinner base? Because it has more weight on top than bottom? Because it is not symmetrical or same on both sides? So why do you think this tower fell first? Who thinks it fell first because it was taller than the other tower? Who thinks it fell first because it had a thinner base? Okay. Who thinks it fell first because it had more weight on top than bottom? Okay. <laughs> Who thinks it fell first because it was not symmetrical? Okay. So let's see, say it had a thinner base like some of you said and see what happens. Actually, it fell first because it had more weight on top than bottom. Good try. Please continue to play again. So as you can see, these towers both had the same base. However, this one fell first because it had more weight on top than the bottom. And the gorilla helped us understand why. So now let's see a video with some kids interacting with the system and some teachers and administrators talk about their experiences. One is that they love to be challenged. They learn and they love the learning through designing. The second thing they like is the animations. Um, they're always giggling and laughing and interacting with the machine and they love every minute of it. challenges sometimes they don't always get it and that's great we want our students to be able to interact we want them to learn we want them to grow we don't want them to give up and that's what Norella teaches students it teaches them not to give up to persevere through challenges and be nimble with their learning and those are the skills that students need today in the 21st century and Norella provides those skills I'm going to be a builder when I grow up I know all this thing. Yes, kids are amazing. <laughs> so we have done a lot of research to see if Norella improves learning and how. Research we conducted with hundreds of children has shown that a first grader interacting with Norella for 20 minutes achieves the same level of science understanding as a second grader. However, one question that came up was, does having the physical real world experience in the context of a mixed reality setting improve children's learning and enjoyment? Or could we achieve the same results with an equivalent tablet or computer game that's only on a screen? So to test this, we conducted an experiment where we compared learning and enjoyment outcomes of children ages 4 to 10 interacting with Norella, our mixed reality system, with another group of children interacting with an equivalent tablet or computer game that was on a screen. For the tablet game, children would shake the ta tablet to create an earthquake on the screen. We wanted to see if adding a simple physical activity, such as shaking a tablet, which is commonly used in games these days, was enough to increase their enjoyment and learning, or if having the physical real world experience was actually more critical for their learning. So the results were quite interesting. Norilla's mixed reality learning platform led to five times more learning compared to the equivalent tablet or computer games while also increasing their enjoyment. 
According to the pre and post test we gave them, children interacting with Norilla were not only learning and understanding the physics principles better, but they could also apply them better to a constructive problem solving task in the real world. On the other hand, surprisingly, shaking the tablet or having a simple physical control did not improve their learning or their enjoyment. This result is especially interesting because kids nowadays spend a lot of time with these ki uh, kinds of tablet or computer games. So now I can see in your eyes, you might be thinking about another question. Couldn't the kids just play with good old blogs? Why do we need all this fancy mixed reality, artificial intelligence, or AI technology, right? Or in other words, is having the AI scientific inquiry guidance that we provide in the system, is that really critical for children's learning? So the answer to this question is also very important because currently many of the children's museums, maker spaces, and physical products rely mainly on exploration and construction with physical materials, but they do not provide the interactive guidance, which is what Norella offers. So of course, since we're scientists, we had to come up with another experiment to test this. And the results of our experiment revealed that having the AI scientific inquiry guidance is actually very critical for children's learning. And without having such guidance, children's learning and engagement results are significantly lower. So currently, we're working with many schools, museums, and informal spaces that are excited to use our product. In summary, we've seen that combining physical and virtual worlds has a lot of potential to improve children's learning as well as 21st century skills like critical thinking and persistence. Learning can be fun, but it's not enough to just make learning fun. In order to make learning effective, we need to provide the necessary guidance and support for our children, utilizing proven learning methods and techniques. So this is just the beginning. There is so much potential and so many things that can be done. Let's all come together to foster the curiosity in our children. Help them open their curtains to discover the world around them. And make each day the best day of their lives. Thank you. Thank you.